Hi there, this is the RPS Project, I'm Richard and today I'm going to have a look at comparators or at least I'm going to have a look at op amps being used as a comparator. Uh, I want to do this because the inputs for an op amp are inverting and non-inverting. They use the symbols plus and minus but what does that mean? If I look at the inputs what am I going to get on the output? So that's what I want to determine to understand that function of an op amp and the circuit that seems to be best suited to doing that is a comparator. So I'm going to set up a circuit and I'm going to have a look at that circuit to see how well it's going to give me an output to determine what inverting and non-inverting does to the output. So um, let's have a look at that on the, uh, on the whiteboard. So this is my circuit on the, uh, on the whiteboard. Now hopefully you can all see this. Um, freeze and zoom if you like. Uh, have a better look at it. But it's quite a simple circuit. Now op amp. I've used the LM358 because it's really quite good at uh, going down to the ground rail um, <coughs> because of the way it's wired internally. This is um, quite well designed for a single voltage rail so that's why I'm using this rather than say like the LM741 which doesn't go down to ground unless you've got a, um, a proper minus voltage uh, on the supply rail. So M358 works great. Um, inputs. Now I'm using on my inputs on both of them the LM336 which is a reference diode or shunt regulator as it's uh, sometimes called. And what they do is they act like a Zener diode basically but they're a precision um, reference so on the inverting input I'm going to use the 2.5 well 2.45 or 2.46 volt reference that's what I'm going to get there and it's going to be set so it's permanently lax I'm using it just like a Zener diode and my inverting input will give me that and then on the non-inverting input up here um, I'm going to put the 5 volt reference um, LM336 curves. I've configured this in this setup. You've got this, got this pot here, a 10k pot and a couple of just ordinary signal diodes and you can trim the voltage that's going to be on my non-inverting input and it can go anywhere from 1.9, no sorry, 1.29 volts up to about 4.15 volts. Now I was going to use 9 volts as the supply but actually I'm not. I'm going to go and use just 6 volts. Don't need to be using um, 9 volts. 6 volts will work perfectly fine so why go any higher? So my voltage supply is going to be 6 volts so like I say that's going to give me anything between 1.29 and 4.15 on my non-inverting because my inverting input is set to about 2.46 at some point during that uh, progression of turning up the input on the inverting sorry the non-inverting input I'll actually get a change on the output because supposedly that's how it works um, the basics of it are is that if the non-inverting if the non-inverted input is greater than the inverting input, I will get a plus. So in other words, the output will be high up to whatever it can draw from the from the rail. Um, but if it's the other way around, if the non-inverting input is higher voltage, has got a higher input than the non-inverting, then I will get a minus output or as low as it can go with the LM358 it'll go to ground so I'll get zero volts on the output so I won't get any output so it'll be able to switch electric like a switch supposedly between on and off depending on whether the non-inverting input is greater than the inverting input I suppose if you look at it like this 
the inverting input, if it's high, will give you an inverted output, which would be low. But if the non-inverting input is high, is the highest voltage, then it will give you a non-inverted output, which will be high. Sounds sensible? Tell you what, let's have a look at it on the workbench and see what it actually does. So here we have my circuit set up, um, LM358. Um, this one over here, this little, looks like a transistor, but it's the shunt regulator reference diode, whatever it is. It's going to act just like a Zener diode. It's the 2.45 volt one on the inverting input. And then this one over here uh, with the pot on the signal diodes, any signal diodes will work. I'm using 1N4148. Um, that's going to trim my invert, non-inverting input. Um, so that we can see the LED come on and off as this comparator effectively switches on and off as I hope and expect it will. A few uh, resistors in there just to make sure it all works correctly but that is my basic circuit so um, let's turn on and have a look. So here it is all set up on the uh, on the breadboard with me multimeters um, this one's going to measure the non-inverting input this is going to measure the, give me the reading for the inverting input and this is going to be for my output. I've also got an LED for the output so we can see it when it does come on. So let's turn it on and have a look. Now as you can see my reference voltage for my inverting input is 2.45 volts and my non-inverting 1.3, not quite staying stable. I suppose because this circuit hasn't been on so it's not exactly warmed up um, and nothing on my output but then um, I haven't got that probe on the uh, on the output so let's do that and have a look the output at the moment as we can see is reading nothing my supply voltage is 6 volts so um, in theory the way I explained it to myself then inverting input is higher than the non-inverting so as this is the controlling voltage the inverting input will give me an inverted output which means it will be zero nothing so I need to turn the non-inverting input up so it's higher than the inverting and when it does that I will get a plus voltage on the output so as you can see that's going up and when it crosses over there we go it comes on and it doesn't take too much to be above it actually they're really sensitive op amps for as a comparator um, these multimeters aren't really good enough to show it but I mean even just one millivolt above the reference and this thing will swap will switch on and change over so as you can see I've got a nice 5 volts, yes yeah, about 5 volts, about 6 volts on the power supply um, and the reference on the non-inverting when I turn the pot all the way up is at 4.16 volts as long as it's above the inverting then I will get a positive on the output the LEDs on but when I come back down when the input is See, they're showing as being exactly the same right now, but just a little nudge up and it comes back on. So it, it doesn't take much. It's very sensitive. When the inverting input is highest, I get nothing out. When the non-inverting input is higher, I get an output. Brilliant. What can I say? That works really well on and off just works yeah I like that brilliant so there you go the op amp as a comparator it's a very simple circuit to set up and very easy to use um, I did enjoy it though it's nice and simple I like simple circuits it's great when they work just without much messing about um, but what did I learn from it? Did I learn anything at all? Well, I suppose I did in this format. Um, it's easy to see that the comparator could be used as a switch. You know, one 
level low, the next one comes on and then goes up and it switches on and off, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, what about a sensing circuit? Something that uh, um, you can sense, like, uh, I don't know, LDR or something. You've got a light switch, it's like a garden light unit, I don't know. Um, you don't want it on all the time, so if you set one of the levels, and it doesn't have to be the non-inverter, it could be the inverting or the non-inverting, you could set it so it's static um, and trim it, I suppose, and set it to one specific level, so like sensitivity. And then when the LDR changes, you get a change on the input and the light will come on. Of course, that does mean that the comparator is always on so you're always going to be drawing some power even when the light wouldn't be on but you could still use it as that switch or even something within within another circuit that requires some sort of switching method but only when it gets to a certain reference point so that's exactly what you could use this comparator for so uh, yeah it seems quite simple really um there are also dedicated comparators not just the uh um the LM358, which is what I'm using as a comparator, but I mean like the LM393, I think that's a comparator, a dedicated comparator within its own right. So I presume what they've done is just taken an op-amp configuration and internally designed it so it works as a comparator. That's a single package within itself that you can get, um, which I suppose would be more effective and work better because it's designed specifically to work as a comparator. There you go. Op-amp as a comparator, it's a brilliant little circuit. I enjoy doing it, so um, give it a go yourself. Anyway, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. Subscribe, and all comments are welcome. See you next time.